For more on relations between China and Brazil, I spoke with Susan Shuseed. She's an attorney specializing in issues that impact Brazil. I wonder if she saw any clues in Bolsonaro's inauguration. I actually don't think that there was very much in the speech that told us how he was going to interact with China. I think that the more telling parts are the fact that he met with the ambassador to, to Brazil from China right away, and that there was a representative from China there when he had disinvited some other countries to attend. So I think that we're going to see maybe a warming of relations from what we had heard during the campaigns. His, his campaign <laughs> rhetoric, uh, he earned the nickname Tropical Trump. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Trump has not been great for China in terms of relations. Uh, but but I, I get the sense that he can probably walk back a lot of this. And there's more at stake in some respects uh, in the relationship with China than what the United States has, right? A lot more. I think that when you're talking about China and the relationship with the United States versus Brazil, in Brazil, China is their largest trading partner. This is not someone that they can afford to alienate completely. Now he is like, oh, they're a great cooperative partner. We invite more diplomatic ties. We invite more investment. So we're already seeing that change because Brazil can't afford to leave China out from their diplomatic relations or their economic relations. Brazil still has uh, economic issues. We've got unemployment right around 12 percent. So really, uh, when, you, when you broaden this out even further, uh, this is sort of a lifeline in some respects to Brazil, making it even more critically important that this relationship stay on track, right? Absolutely. And when things were going on earlier with the U.S. and China, soybeans, that kind of thing, that was a big export for Brazil into China earlier, well, now last year. And, but they're moving into other areas of investment as well, beyond the normal ones that you're talking about, where they're investing in technology and financial services. So this is something that Brazil can't afford to lose, especially being that Bolsonaro has talked about the fact that he would really like to privatize areas of state investment and really make this a private economy in Brazil, moving it away from the state structure that's currently in place. So, Susan, you, you watch Brazil closely. What are some of the things you'll be watching for in the next three, six months in terms of how we gauge this relationship between these two countries? Well, I think that you're probably going to have a little bit of a cool down at first. I think that Chinese investors and people that are over there are going to be looking themselves and waiting to put money in by property, by investments, whatnot, to see what Bolsonaro does in terms of his conversations with China and whether he moves the ticker at all and what he's doing with the United States. We hear him talking a lot about how he wants to get closer with the U.S., with Trump, and start with trade relations here as well. I don't know whether that's possible or not with Trump's policies. So I think over the next three, six, nine months, that's where we're really going to look and see how that affects their relationship with China as well. Susan Shushi, thanks so much for coming in. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.